This is John Walton, and you're listening to the Power Play Point Podcast with the Blue Lighter on Point and Anna Knox. Here's Wilson, and on the right circle, they score! Welcome once again to the Power Play Point Podcast. Hello and welcome also to 2022. This is the Blue Liner on Point, talking to you live to tape from downtown Glen Burnie, Maryland. And uh, Anna Knox is still on holiday break, so the mermaid is still off. But with us this week to co-host, uh, so voice familiar, hopefully, to our longtime listeners, the official consigliere of the podcast, Christian Levesque. Hey, guys. Nice to be on. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you, sir. And uh, how are you doing this evening? I am doing good. I'm awaiting this uh, snow forecast, whether I go home or not. I mean, uh, <laughs> stay home <laughs> tomorrow or not. Dublin snow, so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's... Uh... That's that's gonna be uh that's gonna be a doozy. Being up up north here uh near, near B more, um we're probably gonna it's probably gonna miss us, but I hear uh down uh near the uh the DC Virginia border era a- area, it's it's gonna be uh a, a, a doozy. So I hear. Yeah. yeah, yeah, anywhere from three to six, seven, eight inches, who knows what's gonna happen. So I'm just gonna play it by ear and uh see what the government does tomorrow. I know they're starting to school, uh, close schools, which is a good idea. So we're just going to play it by ear, I guess, you know, and yeah. then uh, shovel some tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I saw a joke map that said uh, for the whole area, 1 to 78 inches possible. So, Yeah, and that's, that's been the norm the last, what, five, six years, right? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's funny because it's true. <laughs> so, right. Yeah. Um, lucky for me, I'm mostly, uh, well, not mostly uh, completely a teleworker, at least these past couple of years, thanks or no thanks to COVID. So not going to affect me one way or the other, but yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll see. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but uh, yeah, but uh, yeah, above all uh, loyal listeners in, in the uh, state of Maryland, Commonwealth of Virginia, and of course the district of Columbia, please stay safe. Uh, what, whatever you do, that's, that's indoors or outdoors, of course. So Word of caution to all. Uh, okay, so when we last left you, um, there was, uh, before I, I took my impromptu holiday break, I'm sorry, mm-hmm. I was just, between the holiday and other stuff that was going on, I was just, uh, I, I, I couldn't get it to go, so uh, we, we figured, shut it down for a week. Um, the last game that was played, actually played, that we could cover was uh, that horrible game on the 18th. Uh, no, the 19th of December against the Kings. Um, just going to go over that with a, a not so fine tooth comb. We all saw what happened. It was a uh, it was a three two loss. Probably the only highlight, at least for me, uh, this game was Connor McMichael's fourth goal, which opened the scoring. And uh, Schultz got him out to a two zero lead, and then after that, it was just pretty much downhill. So, yeah, I. Not not a game I remember fondly, at least or or at all. To be honest, is just one of those one of those telltale games. I think where COVID started to take its toll on the lineup. I would say, and not to make excuses, but I think that's that's when ev- I think that's when everybody started to realize, okay, it might not be a bad idea to give all the teams a rest because clearly both sides clearly weren't at one hundred percent at least from what I saw anyway. So. All right. So, uh, okay. And of course, all of the games uh, after that, up until the 29th against Nashville were postponed and the Olympic break with it. Um, how do you feel about that, by, by the way, Chris? About them postponing the uh, the Olympic break? I am, I mean, or, or postponing the Olympics. 
I'm 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 happy about it. I thought that was the uh, the right call. Um, with the Olympics happening later on in February and uh, the season ending at the very last uh, few days of April, you know the, the players are going to be overseas about three weeks or so. You know, and so you're adding about eight nine games extra to them. Lots of wear and tear. Uh, coming back home for the stretch run, you know. You get the playoffs right around the corner. I'm not a big fan of it, um, but I'm glad that they are staying home. I'm glad with that decision. So we keep those guys here. We can make up the games that were lost due to the COVID and due to the extended holiday break. And I think it's, yeah, great call by the commissioner. I'm I'm really, really happy about it. Yeah, not that uh, I would say uh, probably one of the few decisions I've ever agreed with, but unfortunately, if you look at it in, in all ways, all possible ways, it was the only call to make. You know, right, to keep, right. To keep to keep the season going and and to keep the guys safe, uh, it, it it was literally the only call. And as much as we would like to see a lot of our guys participate in, you know, the grandest sports stage of all, you know, it just wasn't going to happen. It just wasn't going to be practical. So it's the only call to make. Uh, okay, so let's get to the actual on-ice action that we're familiar with. Uh, so, as I mentioned, the first of the three games counting today's that were played since we last left you, uh, the 29th last Wednesday against Nashville. Um, pretty uh, – I, I did not expect all the chippiness in this game, did not expect this game to play out the way it did. Um, but this, this was a, this was a pretty good game to watch. Pretty fun to watch. Um, caps jump out to a three, nothing lead. And of course that's the, probably the worst lead you can have. Um, (laughs) uh, Eller Carlson and Dowd, um, by the end of the 19th minute of the first period, stake them to a three, nothing lead. And, uh, yeah, that, they showed why later on why the three nothing lead is is so dreaded in that in the third period when the Predators came back and scored three straight of their own. Um, the third uh, being gotten by Philip Forsberg, his fourteenth. Um, yeah, I and, and you'll notice if you look at the app, you'll notice the last two were tip ins. All three goals were high danger chances. So I don't know which side of the fence most people are on with Samsonov, but I don't really think you can fault him too much for any of these three goals, given that. At least no, from not my, at all. My vantage point. What do you think? Yeah, agree. No, I can't. You can't fault the kid. I think he's done really well uh, this season. You know, he, he was on. Uh, He's, I, I think he's on a roll. I think he is our go-to goalie this year, I, and I think it's a good problem for us to have when you've got you know him and Vanacek playing back there. I, I, I can't I can't fault uh, Samson off at all. You know, with with all the injuries and players missing due to COVID, you know, and these guys have been off for a little over a week. Um, a lot of folks, you know, they were struggling because there was no hockey. Wanted to see a finely tuned machine out there, but you know, like I said, these guys have been out. For well over a week, you had the worst lead in hockey, and you've got a Nashville team who's pretty good. You know they've got a I think a 19 and 11 record at the time. These guys aren't going to go away. And then you know when you throw in a Philip Forsberg into the mix, yeah, you're, you're they're they're not going to go away that easy. So I kind of expected that to happen. And I think I had told my wife earlier in the day I felt like the Capitals were going to you know pull this one out five to three, and then come to find out that was the case right there. But <laughs> you know, I've really liked the play of Sam Sonoff. I think he's done really well this year. I'm really really happy with him. And like I said, I think he's going to be our go to kid uh, going down from you know towards the uh, home stretch. Yeah, yeah, I, I think he's established himself as as the as the number one. Maybe <clears throat> not maybe not head and shoulders number one, but um the like you said the the go-to guy who they're probably going to play for longer stretches than say uh uh well Vanacek who's just coming off the the protocol or whoever is is uh going to end up being in the backup role um that's in my mind that's uh still an open question because uh I think you've got 
two guys in Hershey right now who can also walk into that role without any problem. So right. like, like you said, it's a pretty good problem to have, especially come trade deadline if you're going to need uh, some more help. And I've, I've made mention of that before. So I don't know if uh, the general manager has that in mind, but um, if, if it if it comes time and that's necessary, then yeah, that's uh, a deal in the making and uh, not to start any rumors. Uh, but yeah, back well, to the – go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You've got uh... – Fukali, who came in and and uh, got a got a in his uh, first uh, NHL start with the Washington Capitals, got a shutout. You've got Copley or Copley, excuse me, who's done really well. I feel bad for him. He you know he he shuttles back and forth. He's a trooper. He does what he's supposed to do. Um, and then and down in uh, I think in South Carolina, we've got a kid by the name of Shepard, who I think is a stud. He's going to be a stud in this league once he gets. Uh, you know, gets up into uh, with the Hershey Bears and uh, hopefully makes a name for himself. I like to see him uh, make his way up. Yeah, I I think that, and I, I think that's one reason why, or, or a reason why, uh, they may have their hand might be forced, even if they don't need any extra help. In that, um, sooner or later, you're going to have to move one of these guys up, and or or they're going to you know sign with another other team so you might as well get something for them while you can so i think that may be yet another reason why a deal may be in the making that's why i keep coming back to that because it's it's definitely possible get something for these guys while there's they're still definitely worth something and, and while you can because you you just never know especially oh, with the lineup being as fluid as it has been this year so yeah yeah i gotta agree so, uh, okay, so we're in the third period of the Nashville game, and it's 14-24 in, and Kuznetsov scores his 10th with a shorthanded goal of all things. That You talk about a call that has worked out this year, putting him on the penalty-killing unit. That is – yeah. That, that, that's like buying a lottery ticket and you're thinking you're not going to win, and it pays out like ten grand or something. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean it's phenomenal. This everybody was so you know busy about you know so quick to write him off. Uh, you know we needed to trade him. We need to do this. We need to do that. But kudos to what he has done. He has he came into training camp with a brand new attitude, a uh, smile on his face every game. Yeah, he did another stint on on, on the COVID protocol list, but he came back. And, and and he hasn't missed a beat. He's he's on fire. I think he's got what he's. If I'm not mistaken, he's got five shorthanded goals. I think he's tied for the league lead in that. And he's volunteered to be on the penalty kill team. That's truly amazing to me. Yeah. No. There's no. There's no denying he's he's <laughs> returning to the Kuznetsov of old. And I I think he's definitely found new life being on on the penalty kill. And it's just an, an, another example of the time-honored tradition of if you put a skilled player on the PK, then it's going to pay dividends if if you put him in the right circumstances. So, yeah, great great for him. He's, he's uh, well, his official stats for this year, 11 goals, uh, 22 assists, 33 points in 30 games. He's a plus 15. I don't see, I can't see what, uh, he's uh, oh shorthanded goals. Uh, well, this one in this game, uh, yeah, it's not breaking out really a whole lot. So, oh no, you're right. Uh, I think it was counting counting today, or is it this game? It's uh, okay. So it's actually two shorthanded goals and four shorthanded okay. points. Points. Four shorthanded yeah. points. So yeah, that's uh, yeah, that's. <laughs> that that's more than good. That's that's a good return on that investment, I would say for sure. Right, and I think with him coming in with that new attitude and with us not having batched him for a good chunk of the uh, the first part of the season, you know, he really stepped up to the plate. I uh, normally Backstrom is on the PK, but uh, Kuzi, wow, I mean, just phenomenal his play this year, and I'm really impressed. Really happy with the kid. I like I like feel good stories. I'm a sucker for that, and I'm glad that he is really doing well yeah as am i and i you know i i have to admit i was i wasn't necessarily looking to get rid of him because honestly 
there wasn't a deal out there that made much sense for the return for a talent like that, even as he was looking to be on the downside. So to me at the point at this, you know, at that point, even at his lowest, getting rid of him didn't really make a whole lot of sense. So I really didn't want to see that happen. I I'm really glad they decided to stick with him and he's, he's renewed his attitude and just found new life with, with this team and, and renewed his love of the game. It looks like. So I'm really, really glad to see that because I think you and I would agree. He was one of the keys to the 2018 cup run. I think you actually said he was the key to the, the, he cup was run. The key, I think going down the stretch and if, uh, Ovi hadn't gotten hot. I think he was going to be your Conn Smythe uh, winner, right. hands down. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, okay, so that, as it turned out to be, was the game-winning goal for that game. Carl Haglund iced it um, with just over a minute left for the empty netter, his second of the year. Uh, Orlov and Carlson on the assist for that one. So that uh, good comeback game, good overall all game. A lot of chippiness, a lot of uh, uh, a lot of feistiness in this game. The one thing I didn't like, and I don't like to waste a whole lot of time on this. Yeah, the the, the officiating in this game was uh, it was a, a pile of uh, insert animal here dung, right, and right, right. It, it was just I I saw calls that I just I didn't understand what these guys were thinking. I really didn't, and especially the one was this the one where. Alexeyev was playing. No, I think. No, I think I'm thinking of another game. Yeah, no, no, it was. It was this one. Uh, Alexander Alexeyev made his debut, and he was called for roughing. And right. lit- literally, all he did was stand in front of the bench. Right, right. I don't know what's been going on with the officiating this season, last season, and the season before. It's just been not consistent at all. Um, I think. Stevie Wonder and Ray Charles can come, come out and, <laughs> and truthfully do a better job at times. I mean, yeah, how do you get a roughing call just standing in front of the bench like that, you know? And, and But kudos to Hathaway. You know, Hathaway, watching him play that other night against against the Preds was, was, was to me, was phenomenal. It's, it's great to have a guy like that on your team who can go around. Not only is he, you know, a grinder, he reminds me of those guys like Bobby Gould and in 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 locker by just doing the dirty things, getting the job done. But he's also a pest. He reminds me of one of those gnats during the summertime that just never goes away. He's always in your <laughs> face at the right time, you know. And I, I like the fact that he's out there on the ice and it gives guys, you know, like Tom Wilson a break because you don't want to see Tom Wilson in the box. And Tom Wilson has become so valuable to this team. You know, he's got so much skill and I'd much rather have him on the ice with that skill than, than in the penalty box and kudos to Hathaway. Yeah, absolutely. I think he's, he's been an unsung hero for uh, a good part of his time with the caps. And when, when they need a spark, they can always count on him for that. So it's, it's great that he's, he's getting the ice time. And of course that he's on that line that more often than not, you know, delivers what, what they need. And, you know, we, we saw that in today's game, which we'll get to in a minute. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, so we'll close out that one, move on to the next game, which was New Year's Eve, um, evening against the Detroit Red Wings in Detroit. Uh, Red Wings jumped out to a 1-0 lead. And honestly, um, when I was watching this game, I didn't think they would give it up because, um, the, the caps looked like they were a bit off, um, in, in the first period and just didn't have any jump in their legs. Well, the first period, there was there were no goals, and then uh, suitors uh, for the Red Wings came out 100 seconds in, 103 seconds in with the wrister, and I thought they were going to run away with it from there. And I don't know what it is, something about the Red Wings, the way they play, but it just they just slow the game down really badly, and the, the cap speed guys just, just don't seem to have any jump, don't seem to have any chance against them. And it just, I don't know, whole period and a half just looked really, really bad. Um, And I I didn't think that, I really didn't think the Caps were going to pull it out. Of course, they did in the end. Kuznetsov tied it with just just over four minutes left, uh, his his 11th. 
And then who should take over the game in the third, late in the third, no less, because we all were thinking, oh, no, here's another overtime game. Um, but Ovechkin, the captain, with his with his, his uh, two goals, and um, the first of which, of course, uh, the record breaker uh, giving him the PPG crown overall. And if you have not seen the video of this shot that scored, please do, because you are in for a treat. Um Chris, what you remember the old commercial uh, 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 for uh, for uh, what was that? As pants or pantyhose or something like that. Nothing beats a great pair of legs. Right. Alex yeah, Ovechkin. Do, do. Alex Ovechkin beat two pairs of legs on this shot. Right. Five hole goal, and what was truly amazing to me was that it was a second to spare. You know, so. Going back and forth, the league, the officiating, you know, he had it, he didn't have it, he had it, he didn't have it. And then finally they, they looked at it and said, yeah, that that was in, you know. So um, amazing what this guy has done, you know, um, being an old man. <laughs> I am I am just so, so happy he's on our side, you know. Just the fact that he goes out there every game and, and every time he touches the puck, you know, it's like uh, another record being broken, you know. So now – He's at the top of the list. He is the power play king, you know, so that's just another thing that we can just, you know, tell our grandkids that we got to witness, you know, while he was here in D.C. Oh, heck yeah, absolutely. And before I forget, I, I, was, I just want to stop this moment and, and give kudos to one of our own, uh, and that being Robbie Gross, because he was the one. I, I don't know if he spotted it himself or he got a report, but like, Maybe five minutes after the game was over, I saw his video recap that he does after the game, and he said in no uncertain terms, there was a 0.2 second differential from the end of the power play till the time the puck crossed the line. He said it. He caught it. So I'm going to give him the kudos that he caught it first. At least I heard him say it first and no other source. So... Great job, Robbie, for for catching that, and I think that that's ultimately what the league's offices figured out and let him actually have the credit for the power play goal. So I just want to I just want to give credit where credit is due right now because I, I and that's why that's why you know you and I do this kind of thing, Chris. It you know where we post on Caps Facebook pages and and you know make observations. It's because we see the things that. A lot of people don't, and sometimes oh, right. yeah. mainstream media just doesn't catch it. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, I've, I've been I've been a fan of this game since you know for forty one years now, and it's just it's just amazing to see things like this, you know, and and to see the technology today and how you can stop a game, go back to instant replay. Um, <clears throat> you would I think what I'd like to see is have something there in each arena instead of them going to back to Toronto or whatever for a call, you know, and I think it would be better that way, but, you know, kudos to the league for, for, for doing the in-depth uh, checking in, investigating on that to, to ensure that the great one gets the, uh, the record breaking power play goal. Absolutely. And so the, the only thing other than the really slow start, the only thing that really bugged me about this game. And, and again, it's, it's hard to say if this is a statistic that, we should be keeping our eye on because at the end of the day, it really didn't matter if you look, at least if you look at the final score, but uh, the faceoff percentage, 34.8, easily one of the worst performances at the dot for this year, 34.8 win percentage, just awful, just terrible. Um, now, of course, they, at least they got the one for three on the power play, as opposed to, uh, didn't, didn't mention this before, they were 0 for 6. Uh, in the game against the Predators, but even so, you now that's maybe that was a contributing factor in the Wings kind of dictating the game at least for the first thirty thirty five minutes. But uh, it's you know again it's hard to say because you know if you don't it, you can win eight out of ten faceoffs, but if the two you lose result in a goal for the other team, then, you know, what does it matter? So it, it's, right. it's still, right. still a confusing stat to me. And, and 
I, I just wish there were a way to kind of quantify that a little bit better into something more meaningful. So I, yeah. it's kind of something I've been harping on. Uh, I, I don't know, maybe someday we'll come up with a stat that means a little bit more as far as that goes. But um, yeah, it, I mean, it, it is a concern. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It is. It is. You know, we used to have one of the highest face-off percentages in the league, you know, um, and now we're near the bottom. And then power play percentage, yeah. <clears throat> you know, I'm I'm hoping that, you know, is the first – what was the game – was that against Nashville? We finally had almost everybody back with with Backstrom and Oshie, but then they go out sick again, or there's an injury here. So I, I like to think that it's because we didn't we don't have, or we didn't have everybody, or we were missing some of our key components. But these are issues we saw last year, and 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 in the season uh, prior as well too, where the power play is struggling. I I think that we've become a team where we're just a one trick pony. Um, and I'm hoping with the face off percentage, it gets better and hopefully we will have a break in the schedule where we can get some full blown practices and they can work on that as well. But obviously having Backstrom out, that hurt us and he's back now. Um, Dowd is one of our better face off guys as well too. So hopefully and I don't want to harp on the negativity, but hopefully we are going to be able to right the ship soon. Power play, yeah, we were one of the best teams. How long, how many years running? And now I think we've become so predictable. Everybody in the entire league has basically caught up to us, and, you know, they're waving goodbye to us. So that's something that, that does concern me, um, especially with this new year. Uh, you know, hopefully going forward they can they can try to fix that. Yeah, I and well, okay. So I'm, I'm I, I know you. Uh, well, we we try to avoid negativity as much as we can, both on the page and and the show here. But I'm yeah. going to put your consulting skills here uh, on the spot here, uh, Chris. Um, do you think a change and and it's not necessarily the one you might not be might be thinking of, but do you think a change is some kind of change is warranted here? Uh, whether it's it's the one the unspoken one that might have been discussed or something else as far as I, the power I, play goes well i think as long as we are uh successful in the standings you know we're we're hovering near the top i won't i i don't i don't foresee a change especially behind the bench and no, it's not with Laviolette, obviously, but I, I, I think right. now if we were to get a speed bump along the way and the power play continues to struggle, then yeah, I can see uh I can see a change happening, you know. And especially, you know, uh come March, April, you know, when you're making that stretch run for for playoff seating and if nothing is going on and usually the power play was our bread and butter. I can see a change happening. Yeah, and I, I think you're right. I think it's going to take, uh, although you know some are starting to uh, clamor for it very loudly. In fact, but I, I think it's going to take uh, a, something of an extended losing streak and plus the power play failing uh, continuously um, to make some sort of change happening and. Yeah, if 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 indeed, like you said, there there is a speed bump or or worse that happens, that results in that, then yeah, you're going to see a change. So, uh, much as much as we'd like to, I think status quo is going to be where it's at for the time being, unless you know they go, even if, even if they still win, if they go something like oh for twenty nine on the power play in the in yes. you know for five or six games or something like that, I don't I don't think it's going to have to get something even worse than what it is now to to make that, that sort of change for the front office to even notice to force their yeah. hand so um okay so that thus ended that game um and 2021 now that that's in the rear view so we move on to today's game against uh New Jersey back in the friendly confines of Capital 1 and it was one of those dreaded afternoon games and that that the, the Caps just seemed to come off to uh, something of a slow start, and this was well, really no different. Um, it wasn't it wasn't that bad, but uh, well, the Devils jumped out to a two nothing lead 
um, on two quick uh, goals that resulted in uh, superior speed and puck movement, to be honest. Um, I, I don't know. I wouldn't say the Caps were caught out of position or were just too slow. It's just the, the Devils were, you know, more apt with the puck, a lot speedier and, you know, have have younger legs overall. And, and like you said, uh, the, I think they might have been caught off guard with the fact that uh, Oshie and Backstrom, who were scheduled to play in this game, uh, had to bow out with uh, quote unquote non-COVID related illnesses. Um, so that that kind of puts a jolt in the in the uh, in the lineup. Uh, now Carlson would tie it up uh, before the end of the period. In fact, in, once again in the magical McMagical nugget McMagical minute minute minute. I think he ought to start doing commercials for uh, for McDonald's. I think that's a second, at least a second or third of those. <laughs> right, <laughs> I'm mistaken. Um, and so that made it two one. And um, okay, so they okay the I'm glad to see the app finally corrected. So because for most of the game, uh, Nico Heishier's goal, uh, 22 seconds in the third, they were calling that a shorthanded goal, and I was like, how is this a shorthanded goal? They were all five right, guys. Right. We're on the ice, so I, I think the app finally acknowledged it, they're calling it a tip in, which it was. And I right. don't even I don't even know I don't even know it was a tip in because if you look at the replay, he sure was just trying to push his 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 shadow off of him, uh, the yeah. guy that was shadowing him, and his stick just happened to be out there and deflected the puck. So, you know, another one not not to be a Samsonov apologist, but not much you can do on that one because it's it's one of those quick redirect change things that you know just get by you and you know what what are you going to do yeah it's one of those one of those things you know for a goalie it, it's just hard to to defend against uh deflections like that you know you're going in one direction the puck's going the other and it's just something hard i i just can't i, I don't float the you know put the blame on on the goaltenders on those tip ins like that and i know a lot of these teams they practice those on a daily basis at practice so and a lot of teams and a lot of these players have perfected it they, it's an art you know mm-hmm. just, uh, i watched a game a couple of days ago i think it was against the predators world vetchkin it looked like he was taking a uh, a slap pass but it was actually he was trying to get somebody it might have been eller low to try to deflect it in but yeah, a lot of these teams are are are, are, are practicing this, and uh, I can't fault the goaltender on that. No, no, I, you really you really can't. But it it from there it it really looked like New Jersey was going to run away with it. Um, but uh, you know it's it's a sixty minute game for a reason. Um, well, it would so the second period would end like that three one for them, and then um, much of the third period would pass by. Um, but I got to say the third period, the caps came out a lot better, a lot, had a lot more jump in their legs, a lot more fire to their game. I think Ovechkin being hit towards the, uh, taking that hit towards the end of the second period might've had something to do with that. Right. A uh, little, little rallying right. of the troops there. So, uh, next goal would be 13, 22 in the third, Nick Dowd with his fifth, um, and, uh, Hathaway and Van Riemsdyk on the. Uh, assist for that one so again that line coming through when needed um and then then it was just that you could just see the the energy came back the legs came back the fire was back and it was just a matter of time and lo and behold it was we had to rely on a mistake by their goalie uh their uh, blackwood uh collected the puck and uh for some reason just decided to send it out and there's lars eller all alone collecting it and but instead of deciding to shoot he uh took it off to the wing a little bit and out of the corner of his eye sees connor sherry streaking through and dishes it to him who put it away for his eighth and tying the game yeah great heads up play there by eller you know being a, the johnny on the spot so to speak you know or the tiger mm-hmm. on the spot so to speak. it looked like um, <laughs> the blackwood was trying to you know i i think he didn't see eller and i thought he thought eller was probably going to check up and uh, it looked like Blackwood was going to uh, send the puck up ice. But sure enough, there's Eller right there at the right place in the right time. And Sheary, oh, my God, this kid, I don't want to say kid, but he's got some great wheels, and he is he's pretty fast. And he was right there to, to bang the puck home, you know. And, uh, yeah, you were right. They had some extra uh, they had some extra pep in their step in that third period, just like the Nashville uh, 
game, that third period, they were an entirely different team out there. And uh, but it's good that you know Dowd came up big. Uh, Sherry's game time goal when I kind of got, I thought, well, you know, this is going to be it right here. But over time, you know, has been our thorn in our side this season. So, but but great heads up play by Eller. Yeah, absolutely. And and uh, speaking of overtime, well, it, it which it which it uh, ended up going to. Um, yeah, we're all we're all dreading it, of course. But they they actually had a few good looks. Uh, I think this time around, which is why I'm not too, too disappointed. It wasn't one of those where, uh, let's see, uh, predictable uh, skate around with a puck for two to three minutes and then you know, backtrack and then give it up in their zone. Oh, game's over. Wasn't really like that this time around. They really had some good looks this time around. I think uh, El- Eller again had, if I'm not mistaken, um, had had pre- pretty much the best chance if 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 it's what I'm thinking of, um, and yeah, 306, 306 of the overtime period, he was he was all alone in front of the net. I think he would have had it if he didn't wait too long to shoot. Um, well, I think uh, Craig Lachlan had said the puck rolled up at the last. Yeah, minute. yeah, the, it, it it did, it did, and I think his 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 intent was to try and maybe tuck it around him. But yeah, I think you're right that the 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 puck was just too much of it. I, I I was I was saying this to my wife when uh when we were watching the game. I really 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 wish they would decide to resurface the ice after the third period. Yeah, I really yeah. wish they would because that ice was starting to get really really bad. With it being warm outside, yeah. <laughs> With it being right, yeah, exactly. With it being warm yeah. outside, I mean, guys were over skating pucks, uh, mishandling, um, fanning on shots. That you name it, it was just it, it was it it was really bad. It was it was uh, Shakespeare's comedy of errors to to be sure with with uh, right. that ice and and you know not to knock my own team but unfortunately uh, Cap One has been you know earned itself a bit of a reputation in having one of the worst playing services in the league. So, you know, this, this didn't yeah, really help. You got that right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm, so, I'm a strong proponent in that having the ice resurfaced, re, uh, excuse me, resurfaced after the third period. Cause you give those guys a clean sheet of ice. Why not? You know? Yeah. I mean, if you're going to have, if you're going to have more skating anyway, you're going to have all that space. You know, let the guys who can sp- skate better, you know, do their thing. And yeah, right. a clean sheet of ice is going to do them some good. So, uh, but anyway, we all saw it. We all know how it ended. Uh, he sure uh, put it away uh, about, uh, I want to say about a minute after uh, Lars Eller had his chance and missed um, to uh, ice the game. Uh, but like you, like, like we were saying before, before we got going here, um, it, it's a point in the standings that, you know, Four uh, as as late as four minutes left in the game, we weren't sure we were going to get. So, you know, glass half full, I think. Right, right, right. Yeah, I mean, there was no guarantee, uh, especially being down three to one like that, and we were able to turn it on and able to to tie it up late in the third period. But yeah, at least we got a point. We're a point up now on the I think on the Carolina Hurricanes right now. So. It's it's we still have a long ways to go go you know this is a marathon so um, there's still a lot of exciting hockey left and hopefully we can get more of our guys back we, we you know we get Oshie and Backstrom healthy um, you know and these guys that we were able to bring up these rookies from Hershey have have done a world of good you know the next man man up mentality has really come into play with this team I'm I'm more than ecstatic uh, I mean just I'm just so excited about this team you know the future is bright because a lot of experts a lot of us have talked behind the scenes about you know hey what, what's going to happen to this team once you know OV is done and, and Backstrom is done well I think we've got a glimmer you know we've got a glimpse into the future mm-hmm. you've got guys, Protus uh, Faravari oh my god he, he's, he's playing on the first D line with Carlson you know um, and doesn't look is, out of place he does not he looks like a five six year veteran out there he's got the size he's going to get bigger you know you and everybody was 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 questioning whether Tammy or, or, or VTech was going to be able to shoulder the load load they've done remarkable as well too Scarbosa has done really well and then you know we've got Connor McMichael 
who's been playing, you know, on and off and has looked real good out there. And um, LaPierre, who scored his very first goal on uh, an opening night. So we've got a lot of exciting uh, pieces in Hershey or in junior hockey that can that can come up at a moment's notice and step in. And we're not missing guys like Oshi or Backstrom or Mantha. You know, we've got these guys that are stepping in and have done a lot of good. Yeah, absolutely. So I want to put you on the spot one last time before we wrap up. Um, okay. Speaking, speaking of the young guys, and we've had a lot of them that have shined, had their moment in, in one, at one point or another. Would, well, would you put one above the others? And if, if you would, who would that be? Who has impressed you the most out of all those guys? Wow. Um, Saravari. I really, really, really liked his play. He's I, I, opening from opening night on. He's really stepped up. Um, he's he's fast. He's got the size. You know, he's really blended in well with guys like Orlov and Carlson. You know, and uh, believe it or not. Uh, the other kid I like, Protus. I think he is phenomenal. He is. I think this guy is six four, six five. He is huge out there. You know, it, it, they don't look out of place. They're they're on the. They're, it's just remarkable how these guys have come in, like I said before, at a moment's notice, and are able to step in, not miss a beat. And you would think that okay, these guys are new. There's going to be a chemistry issue. No, these guys have blended really well with their line mates. You know, so I'm really like the play of. Saravari and Protus. Oh yeah. Now, if it, and yeah, I would say those two uh, probably top three. I would throw in. Um, I would throw in uh, uh, kind of as a, a as a dark horse, uh, Brett Leeson as well. Uh, he's, yeah, he's he's yeah. a pretty good pretty good grinder. Not going to get it on the short a score sheet every night, but he will give you five to fifteen solid minutes of hockey every yeah. night. He's in the lineup, so. Um, now, Protus and, and Ferivari, uh, Ferivari, the only, if, if there was uh, any knock I would have on his game at all, and there's really not, but if, if, if I, the only thing I could see him needing to improve is his play with the puck. Uh, like you said, he's, he's got the size, he's got the speed, he can cover the ice. So that is, that is job one for a defenseman. So he's got that down with no problem. He, he's got that easily. He's And he's played on the top pairing without any problem, but I think he can do more with the puck. A guy who can move like that, if he can improve his puck carrying skills, watch out. Then, yeah. you know, it, it, there's been rumblings in some of the rooms that uh, he ought to be a, a rookie of the year caliber. Uh, or or future Norris candidate. I don't know that he's quite there yet, but if he can improve his play with the puck, yeah, watch out. Then you can put him in that upper echelon category. Now, oh yeah, yeah, no doubt, no doubt. No yeah, doubt. Protus. Um, I'm he's he's been what I would call quietly effective. He's not all that flashy. Um, he's he's not gonna he's not gonna you know out stick handle or out deke you or, or out skate you. Um, but he'll do things, the, all of the little things that keep the offensive, you know, play going. And that's, that's where I think that's, well, at least this year, that's been his, uh, his kind of, uh, kind of his wheelhouse. Now, what I would like to see him do more of, I would like to see him use his size a bit more. Um, I'm not, I don't think he's shied away from the play along the boards, but I think he's not quite sure how to use his frame to kind of manipulate and keep, keep the play going along the boards and, and impose his will. Uh, he's not inclined to be a big hitter or, or even, you know, an intimidating presence, but I think if he learns to use his frame a bit more to box people out more, give himself some more room, a la Tom Wilson, I think he'll be even that much more effective going forward. Yeah, I think you're right. I think um, with more experience and him being up with the team, he'll get that with guys like, you know, Hathaway and, and, and Dowd and, and Wilson, you know, uh, him having those guys right there as, as, as mentors will, will definitely um, 
will definitely help him out and help his game improve a lot. You know, he has the speed. I mean, he has the size. You know, we just like to be able to see what he can do with his frame. But that, that comes with time and more experience out there, more game time as well, too, you know. Yeah, yeah, I, I would say so. That's uh, – yeah, absolutely. Uh, and that's uh, that, that's a great place for him to learn. Of course, the, the coaching staff will be helping him along too. And uh, just want to add another note. Uh, somebody, somebody in one of the rooms said uh, Ovechkin's defensive game has been uh, much improved over, over the course of the last two years. I think you can uh, give a lot of credit to assistant coach Scott Arneal for that because in his day – he was a, a heck of a, a defensive forward himself. Uh, I, yeah. I think you ought to you ought to throw some credit his way as far as that goes. Um, oh yeah, all right. Up the game. I mean, he's out there blocking shots. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. And that yeah, that's that's been a hallmark of his game, <laughs> along with uh, uh, among other things, his ability to find the guy too. Not that he exactly. couldn't before. <laughs> so. Right. Right. Exactly. All right, so that was the week that was uh, on the ice for the Caps. Um, bit of a bumpy road as far as COVID, but uh, they found a way to keep the games going. Uh, much needed break for all. Uh, hopefully, everyone will you know start to get uh, like you've mentioned, Chris, a few times. Uh, we'll start to get healthier. Uh, not just us, but all teams start to get back into having you know fuller lineups. I think the decision to allow everyone to have taxi squads was also a, a, a you know a, a smart idea because you know I, I don't think anybody saw this this coming and catching up with you know knocking so many guys out of the lineup so you know had to do something and this this was the one of the right calls. So uh, now previews of coming attractions. Um, so the first game of this week we just played, um, there was a game scheduled for Tuesday. Tuesday was actually supposed to start a uh, northern road trip, as it were. Uh, there was a game scheduled Tuesday the 4th against the Montreal Canadiens uh, in La Belle Provence of Quebec, which of course is in Canada. Well, uh, that has been postponed due to the cross-border restriction. Um so basically, the league has decided, okay, you know, Canada's protocols being a lit, you know, quite a bit more strict. Um, no, no American teams until they give the okay are allowed to cross the border and play. So that will be a, a, a game that will be made up later in the year, I'm sure. And towards the end of the week, uh, Friday and Saturday of this week, the seventh and the eighth, um, they play the the two teams that just had the Winter Classic. Uh, first, the St. Louis Blues on Friday night, 8 o'clock puck drop, and then the Minnesota Wild on Saturday night, so it's a back-to-back, -back, also 8 o'clock puck drop. Uh, did you happen to catch that game, Chris? Yeah, I caught a little bit of that game last night. Uh, man, it was cold, too. <laughs> yeah. So hopefully uh, both teams are thawed out and, you know, nice and warm when we, uh, we get them. Yeah, it was, it was a great game. I was really impressed with it. Uh, you know, nice size crowd there as well too. I'm always a big fan of the outdoor games, so it, it was it was nice. It was good to see two teams that are uh, both uh, firmly implanted in a in a playoff race. You know, battling out last night in the elements. So it was it was it was exciting. Yeah, I, I think they brought a little fun back to the game. I think uh, uh, the the Winter Classic had gotten a little stale uh, you know, these, these last few years. So I, I I think they brought a little fun back to it this year. Is is, is really really glad to see. So. All right. Oh, yeah, so, absolutely. yeah, definitely. Absolutely. And then you get two. You had two former uh, capital coaches, assistant coaches, battling it out. You had uh, Craig Berube, who was a fan favorite, the Chief, and you had Dean Evanson, who was on Bruce Boudreaux's uh, staff uh, in a stint here in Washington uh, a few uh, <clears throat> short years ago. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, ab absolutely. Yeah. yeah, good. Good to see those guys. Uh, of course, uh, uh, Chief uh, winning himself a cup uh, a couple years ago. Uh, so yeah, good to see those guys uh, make making out fairly well. Uh, long time uh, uh, for both in the Caps organization. So uh, yeah, good good eye there, good eye. Uh, all right, so that'll uh, that should wrap it up for this week. Um, going uh, going into next week, as as I said, the schedule. Uh, I don't want to go too far into previews because we're not quite sure if anything else will be postponed or moved. Um, there's only two more games in the week after that, but uh, we're going to <clears throat> we're going to plot on uh, no matter what. We'll definitely keep on on broadcasting as long as uh, health and time allow. Thank goodness. 
So, uh, Chris, want to uh, thank you again for coming on uh, this evening and uh, providing your knowledge and expertise as well. And uh, hopefully we'll uh, hear from you down the line in a future segment this season. Hey, sounds good. It's been my pleasure. Thanks for having me on, Gil. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay, so uh, for the consigliere, Chris Levesque, this is the Blue Liner on Point signing off and reminding you that you can make the number one disappear. How? You just add a G and it's gone. <laughs> Hallelujah and let's go Caps. Let's go Caps. This has been another episode of the Power Play Point Podcast. All episodes are available from Apple Podcasts, the Podbean app, blueliner77.podbean.com, and now available from Stitcher. Music by Joe McAllister, voiceover by Jeffrey Conkle. Good morning, good afternoon, and good night, Power Play Point Podcast. Thanks for listening.